Welcome to Phlebotomy Solutions video series. This video, these videos will give you a very, in, a very uh, basic introduction to phlebotomy uh, with the other series going a little more in depth. Now in this video, we're going to try to talk about what to expect from these videos, what to expect from phlebotomy in general. Uh, we're going to cover different areas, kind of an overview. So this first one is the jobs of phlebotomy in which we're going to discuss the different areas uh, that, are, that are practiced in phlebotomy uh, as far as departments and equipment you might be using and, and things to be aware of. So let's just sit back and enjoy the videos. All right, let's look at the word phlebotomy. Phlebotomy, it comes from a Greek word that means basically to cut a vein. If you look at the word phlebotomy, you have the first part of the word phleb, which means vein. And of course, otomy means to cut. So literally this means to cut a vein. Now this is where the word comes from. This is how this is where we get the word phlebotomy. And it's very important that you learn to spell the word phlebotomy. Believe me, I've I've have a lot I've had a lot of students in the past and even uh, just even phlebotomists out there who can't even spell the word phlebotomy sometimes. So learn to spell it, learn to spell it correctly. Uh, it's not with an F, as it may sound phlebotomy, it's with the PH. So PH phlebotomy, phleb vein, otomy to cut or to cut a vein is what the word comes from. Now let's take a look at the word hematology. Uh, hematology is like the word phlebotomy. It comes, it's made up of two words, hema, blood, ology, study. So basically these words come together to form hematology. Again, a Greek, uh, Greek word, hema, blood, ology, study of, the study of blood. So the definition we have is, is hematology is the scientific study of blood and blood forming tissue. Now, a hematologist is a physician who specializes in the functions and disorders of the blood. So hematology is the study of blood and a hematologist is a physician who specializes in studying those uh, blood forming uh, blood and blood forming tissues. So here we have uh, one that could be as a department, the hematology department and hematologist, the person who specializes in that department itself. Now, if we look at uh, blood, blood is the life-maintaining fluid that circulates through the body's heart, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Of course, capillaries being the smallest blood vessels in the human body. So we look at blood and how it circulates. It circulates through these four areas, from the heart, to the arteries, to the veins, to the capillaries. Now, we can debate on the, the, the way um, this is listed, of course, the heart and from the arteries. And then the arteries will move the veins through the capillaries. Uh, uh, arteries will move the blood through the capillaries, back to the veins, into the veins, and then back to the heart. So really, heart, arteries, capillaries, veins. Uh, but we're listing them here as far as uh, the largest to the smallest in, in blood vessels. So capillaries is uh, the smallest blood vessels in the human body. Therefore, it, here it is last. But we'll talk about blood circulation in another PowerPoint. Now. Phlebotomy is a procedure that removes blood from the body. That's a basic fundamental uh, lesson here. What is phlebotomy? It's the procedure, again, that removes blood from the body. Simple. Now, let's talk about allied health personnel, licensed and unlicensed healthcare professionals who can draw blood. So now you know what phlebotomy is, that we just talked about from the last slide. Let's talk about the ones who can draw blood. We have physicians. We have a disease intervention specialist. We can get a whole list here of medical researchers, nurses, ranging from RN, LPN, LVN, physician's assistants, which are PAs, uh, medical technologists, uh, radiologic technologists. Uh, we have EMT personnel, and the list goes on and on and on. Medical assistants, and of course, then phlebotomists. Uh, some of these don't need a license, like a... For example, nurses don't need a license to draw blood, PAs don't need a license, doctors don't need a license, but sometimes uh, EMTs are required, sometimes they're not, depending on what state they're in. Medical assistants do not need a license to draw blood, but they are only allowed to draw blood when a physician is present in the office or somewhere nearby uh, that they are working under. Now, a phlebotomist does not need any physician, they can go anywhere because now they have a license by the state to draw blood without any uh, hindrances at all. So phlebotomy, uh, the purpose of phlebotomy, we're looking at the purpose of phlebotomy is to obtain a blood sample for diagnostic testing. That's again, a really basic uh, fundamental uh, understanding here. Uh, we need to understand this. Now, these videos can be used also to prepare you for testing because this is what we present in our classes to help them 
prepare and uh, give them the basic uh, overview of phlebotomy, which we're going to go into in other slides. So again, uh, the basic purpose of phlebotomy is to obtain a blood sample for diagnostic testing. That is the basic fundamental. Those tests then go back to the doctor who then reads, gives those diagnoses to the patients based on the blood test itself. Now, safety devices. Uh, and some of these PowerPoints are going to talk about safety devices. OSHA approved safety, de safety devices. Now, if you don't know what OSHA is, we have a whole PowerPoint slide on the different uh, agencies like OSHA and what their requirements are. So we will be going through these different agencies and departments as we move forward in other PowerPoints. Now, uh, these safety devices, and these are OSHA approved safety devices, have been created for preventing injuries among healthcare workers during phlebotomy procedures. Devices that do not have safety devices, particularly uh, OSHA approved ones, needles, butterflies, syringes, or, or so forth, should not be used if there is not a safety device attached to it. That's an OSHA violation period. So if you're using needles that don't have safety devices, you're of course uh, under OSHA violation and also Cal OSHA as well. So make sure you take necessary precautions when it comes to safety devices. They're always to be used with every blood draw. Now healthcare workers, you're at, you're at risk for infection or diseases and possible exposure of bloodborne pathogens. This is what happens when you don't, when you don't use uh, safety devices, you are at a higher risk of, uh, of exposure of bloodborne pathogens. So this is why we need to make sure we have the proper safety, OSHA approved safety devices attached and that we are using them every time we do a blood draw. Now safety is the number one concern on the job and in the class. We're going to talk a little bit about this. We're going to be learning these PowerPoints, specifically safety. Uh, that's the number one priority in any classroom, any lab, any hospital. The number one thing is safety. We cannot uh, get any more uh, clear than that. Number one concern on the job. What you'll be learning uh, in this module, this is we're going to talk about this, what you'll be learning in the in these videos or we call them modules in our classrooms but also in these videos what you'll be learning one we'll be talking about capillary punctures we're going to have a video on capillary punctures uh, how to uh, the general use of lancets now general uh, general lancets are used for obtaining capillary small samples from the fingertip or heel now we're going to talk about the difference between uh, as you can see in the picture manual versus automatic all right they should not be using manual lancets anymore because there's no safety devices to attach to them as you can see all you're doing is taking off the tip of the head uh, plastic uh, cap and you expose the needle there's nothing to uh, protect from sticking yourself even after you stick the patient uh, the depth range is all based upon the one sticking the person to go too deep or to injure the patient is more uh, is a higher risk with the uh, uh, manual so manuals should not be used when you're doing capillary punctures now down below, the automatic lancets that are spring activated should be the ones that are being used in hospitals, labs, and pretty much everywhere else. These are the ones that are basically approved, uh, usually OSHA approved safety lancet devices with the spring activation. They're easy to use, safer to use, but again, we must understand, uh, we limit, we lower the risk, but again, these devices that are, that are approved also can have uh, malfunctions with the uh, with the spring itself so you could you know the spring might not work the needle might still be exposed or uh, it might not even come out at all so you got to be very careful when you're handling even the automatic line sets because there's still some that can be uh, malfunctioned so always safety is the first rule uh, hematocrit uh, again we're going to talk about hematocrit uh, which is a way to determine your red blood cell count we'll talk about different tests in these videos uh, tests that be are more most uh, often used in a lab uh, and hematocrit is part of a CBC test. Now CBC test is a complete blood count which we'll talk about in another video. Uh, we have we have a lot of these videos that break this down for you so it give you a really good knowledge of phlebotomy in all the different areas. So this is basically what you're going to be dealing with is hematocrit. I talk about blood glucose testing and glucose is a type of sugar found in carbohydrate foods uh, which we do these capillary sticks, uh, finger sticks we call them or capillary sticks. Uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, glucose testing. Now, these can be done in the lab, uh, mostly in hospitals, uh, private physicians. Depends where you work as a phlebotomist, you might be performing these. Uh, venipunctures, proper venipuncture procedure. Now, we're going to be discussing uh, the different uh, do's and don'ts of uh, venipuncture procedures. Uh, believe it or not, uh, there is 
a uh, number of don'ts that we see in the field of phlebotomists who are uh, who don't understand the proper procedures. Uh, for example, we talk about the angle of insertion of the needle, the angle of the degree of angle, uh, the order of veins. Believe it or not, there is an order of veins, which vein to look at first, uh, second, and third. Talk about the different site locations from the uh, the arm locations you can see in the picture, which is called the antecubital fossa area, as well as the back of the hand, the wrist, and even uh, lastly, the foot. We talk about the different ways uh, to do this properly, even the tying of the tourniquet, how long you leave the tourniquet, uh, how close or how high you tie the tourniquet. Believe it or not, there are guidelines to how you do these things. The order of draw of the tubes, order of veins, proper tourniquet, placement, as well as uh, location of where you're drawing blood. So this stuff we need to uh, clarify, and we're going to have a whole PowerPoint on this as well. People who violate these uh, guidelines and procedures are the ones that are at higher risk of possible uh, pay, um, you know, violating the standard of care and also patient injury, which leads could lead into a legal action, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Uh, we'll talk about winged infusion sets, also known as butterflies, uh, proper butterfly placement, how to handle a butterfly, different types of butterflies, uh, attaching syringes to butterflies, as you can see in, the, in one of these pictures. Uh, when and when not to use them, the two different sizes that should only be used and where, location of the arm or even the back of the hand, proper angle or degree of insertion. We need to talk about that as well. Again, these are part of the phlebotomy uh, knowledge and understanding when you're on the job. And this will help you uh, taking the exam and tests. We'll also talk about syringe draws. Uh, syringe draws, uh, uh, when are they necessary? Uh, when you should when you should consider them and how to properly do a syringe draw and some key points you need to understand when doing them So we need to talk about that as well. and We have that in another PowerPoint video as well. So part of this is syringe draws uh, Urine analysis we're gonna talk about that and a urine analysis of urine considered a fast accurate non-invasive procedure because believe it or not You will be handling urine uh, stool specimens uh, uh, sputum uh, different types of fluids in a lab, in a hospital, uh, depending where you work, uh, doctor's office, uh, you'll be have to handle this stuff. You're not going to be you're not going to be working in a lab to test it, but you will have to handle it. Also, handing out between sterile and non-sterile uro- urine cups, a uh, 24-hour urine containers, pr- some with preservatives, some without. You need to know the difference and when to uh, instruct a patient on how to use them correctly. Part of your job as a phlebotomist. So we'll be dealing with that as well. Uh, fecal cult testing. Now, these fecal cult tests are also non-invasive procedures like urine that physicians order to find out if a patient is bleeding internally by using a specific card and a liquid developer to test the feces. Now, these you might be collecting at a lab or at a hospital. You might be handing them out and again giving instructions on how to use them properly. This is part of the job of phlebotomist. Fecal cult test. Now, you won't be testing these things like urine or the, the, the fecal cult testing but you will be handing them out and giving instructions and then collecting them. The proper way to collect them is with, uh, we'll be talking about this in another slide, is how to handle them and how to process them correctly. Strip testing. We talk briefly about strip tests. Uh, we, we, you won't be doing strip testing at phlebotomist, but you might be collecting the sample in the lab. They might be handing it to you in the tube with the swab and you have to take it back to processing and know where to take it and know where to, uh, who to give it to. So you need to be aware of basically what is a strip test, how do I handle it without contaminating it, uh, and the proper ways of processing it as well. So strip tests, again, some of these things you won't be testing, but you need to be aware of them.